The United States presidential election of 1852 was the 17th quadrennial presidential election, held on Tuesday, November 2, 1852. Democrat Franklin Pierce, a former senator from New Hampshire, defeated General Winfield Scott, the Whig nominee. This was the last election in which the Whigs served as the principal opposition to the Democrats. Incumbent Whig President Millard Fillmore had acceded to the presidency after the death of President Zachary Taylor in 1850. Due to Fillmore's support of the Compromise of 1850 and his enforcement of the Fugitive Slave Law, he was popular in the South but opposed by many Northern Whigs. On the 53rd ballot of the 1852 Whig National Convention, Scott defeated Fillmore to clinch the party's nomination. The Democrats were divided among four major candidates, who traded leads through the first 48 ballots of the 1852 Democratic National Convention. On the 49th ballot, Dark Horse candidate Franklin Pierce won his party's nomination. The Free Soil Party, a third party opposed to the extension of slavery into the territories, nominated Senator John P. Hale of New Hampshire. With no major policy differences between the two major candidates, the election became a contest of personalities. Though Scott had been the top U.S. general in the Mexican-American War and had had a long and distinguished military career, Pierce had also served in the Mexican-American War. The Whigs were badly divided between their northern and southern wings, and Scott's anti-slavery reputation further damaged his campaign in the South. A group of Southern Whigs and a separate group of Southern Democrats each nominated their own tickets, but both efforts failed to attract support. Pierce and his running mate William R. King won by a comfortable majority in the popular vote and carried 27 of the 31 states, while Scott won 43.9% of the popular vote. Pierce won the highest share of the electoral vote since James Monroe's uncontested 1820 re-election. In the aftermath of this overwhelming defeat the Whig Party rapidly collapsed as a national political force as internal tensions regarding the issue of slavery caused mass abandonment of the party. Nominations <inaudible> 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 The 1852 presidential election conventions of the parties are considered below in order of the party's popular vote. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Democratic Party nomination. Franklin Pierce, former US Senator from New Hampshire. Lewis Cass, US Senator from Michigan. James Buchanan, former US Secretary of State from Pennsylvania. William L. Marcy, former U.S. Secretary of War from New York Stephen Douglas, U.S. Senator from Illinois As Democrats convened in Baltimore in June 1852, four major candidates vied for the nomination, Louis Cass of Michigan, the nominee in 1848, who had the backing of Northerners in support of the Compromise of 1850, James Buchanan of Pennsylvania, popular in the South as well as in his home state, Stephen A. Douglas of Illinois, candidate of the expansionist and the railroad interests, and William L. Marcy of New York, whose strength was centered in his home state. Throughout the balloting, numerous favorite Sun candidates received a few votes. Cass led on the first 19 ballots, with Buchanan second, and Douglas and Marcy exchanging third and fourth places. Buchanan took the lead on the 20th ballot and retained it on each of the next nine tallies. Douglas managed a narrow lead on the 30th and 31st ballots. Cass then recaptured first place through the 44th ballot. Marcy carried the next four ballots. Franklin Pierce of New Hampshire, a former congressman and senator, did not get on the board until the 35th ballot, when the Virginia delegation brought him forward as a compromise choice. He consolidated his support in subsequent voting and was nominated nearly unanimously on the 49th ballot. In a peace gesture to the Buchanan wing of the party, Pierce's supporters allowed Buchanan's allies to fill the second position, knowing that they would select Alabama Senator William R. King. On the second ballot, with only minor opposition, King finally obtained the Democratic vice presidential nomination. During the ensuing campaign, King's tuberculosis, which he believed he had contracted while in Paris, France, denied him the active behind-the-scenes role that he might otherwise have played, although he worked hard to assure his region's voters that New Hampshire's Pierce was a northern man with southern principles. King died shortly after his inauguration on April 18, 1853. Topic. Whig Party nomination 
Winfield Scott, Commanding General of the U.S. Army from New Jersey Millard Fillmore, President of the United States from New York Daniel Webster, U.S. Secretary of State from Massachusetts The 1852 Whig National Convention, held in Baltimore, Maryland, was bitterly divided. Supporters of President Fillmore pointed to the successful Compromise of 1850 and the failure of a nascent secession movement in the southern states in 1850–1851. The Northern Whigs believed that the Compromise of 1850 favored the slaveholding South over the North. Northern Whigs favored heroic Mexican-American War General Winfield Scott of New Jersey. Scott had earned the nickname of Old Fuss and Feathers in the military due to his insistence on appearance and discipline, and while respected, was also seen by the people as somewhat foppish. A deadlock occurred because most New England delegates supported Daniel Webster. On the first ballot, Fillmore received all delegate votes from the South save four, but only received 18 Northern delegate votes. The vote was 133 for Fillmore, 131 for Scott, and 29 for Webster. Scott was nominated on the 53rd ballot by a margin of 159 to 112, with 21 for Webster. Again, with a highly sectional vote, Scott won the North by a 142 to 11 vote, with 21 for Webster, while Fillmore won the South by a margin of 101 to 17. William Alexander Graham was chosen as the vice presidential nominee. 1852 would be the last time the Whig Party would nominate a candidate for president. Within the decade, the party fell apart and ceased to exist, principally due to regional divisions caused by the slavery issue. <laughs> Free Soil Party nomination John P. Hale, U.S. Senator from New Hampshire the Free Soil Party was still the strongest third party in 1852. However, following the Compromise of 1850, most of the barnburners who supported it in 1848 had returned to the Democratic Party while most of the Conscience Whigs rejoined the Whig Party. The second Free Soil National Convention assembled in the Masonic Hall in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. New Hampshire Senator John P. Hale was nominated for president with 192 delegate votes 16 votes were cast for a smattering of candidates. George Washington Julian of Indiana was nominated for vice president over Samuel Lewis of Ohio and Joshua R. Giddings of Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Union Party nomination The Union Party was formed in 1851, an offshoot of the Whig Party in several southern states, including Georgia. As the 1852 presidential election approached, Union Party leaders decided to wait and see who was nominated by the two major parties. The movement to nominate Daniel Webster as a third-party candidate began in earnest following the Whig Convention, largely driven by those who had been strenuously opposed to Winfield Scott's nomination, among them Alexander Stevens, Robert Toombs, and George Curtis. While Webster was against what he perceived as a revolt from the Whig Party and preferred not to be nominated, he let Americans vote for him should the party choose to nominate him. The Union Party held its Georgia State Convention on August 7, 1852 and nominated Webster for president and Charles J. Jenkins of Georgia for vice president. A formal convention was held at Faneuil Hall in Boston, Massachusetts on September 15, affirming the nominations made at the state convention in Georgia and rejecting Winfield Scott as nothing more than a military figure. The Webster-Jenkins ticket received nationwide support, particularly among Southern Whigs, but also in Massachusetts and New York, but it was largely perceived by many as nothing more than getting voters who would, in different circumstances, support Scott. Webster had no real chance of winning the election, but even the new Know Nothing Party endorsed Webster, nominating him without even his own permission. However, Webster died nine days before the election of a cerebral hemorrhage on October 24, 1852. <laughs> Native American know Nothing Party nomination Around the mid-1840s, nativists were present in New York politics, under the aegis of the American Republican Party. The American Republican Party was formed in 1843 in major opposition to immigration and Catholicism. In 1845, the party changed its name to the Native American Party. Their opponents nicknamed them the Know Nothings, 
and the party liked the name and it became the nickname of the party after that until it collapsed in 1860. In 1852, the original candidate planned by the Native American Party was Daniel Webster, the nominee of the Union Party as well as Secretary of State. They nominated Webster without his permission, with George Corbin Washington grandnephew of George Washington as his running mate. Webster died of natural causes nine days before the election, and the Know Nothings quickly replaced Webster by nominating Jacob Broom as president and replaced Washington with Raynal Coates. With Webster collecting a few thousand votes, Broom received too few, and lost the election. In the future, former President Millard Fillmore would be their candidate in 1856. Southern Rights Party nomination George Troop, former U.S. Senator from Georgia The Southern Rights Party was an offshoot of the Democratic Party in several southern states which advocated secession from the Union, electing a number of congressmen and holding referendums on secession in a number of southern states, none of which were successful. It was unclear in early 1852 if the party would contest the presidential election. When the Alabama State Convention was held in early March, only nine counties were represented. The party decided to see who was nominated by the two major national parties and support one of them if possible. When Georgia held its state convention, it acted as the state Democratic Party and sent delegates to the national convention. After the Democratic National Convention, the party was not sure that it wanted to support Franklin Pierce, the Democratic nominee. Alabama held a state convention from July 13 to 15 and discussed at length the options of running a separate ticket or supporting Pierce. The convention was unable to arrive at a decision, deciding to appoint a committee to review the positions of Scott and Pierce with the option of calling a national convention if the two major party candidates appeared deficient. The committee took its time reviewing the positions of Pierce and Scott, finally deciding on August 25 to call a convention for a Southern Rights Party ticket. The convention assembled in Montgomery, Alabama, with 62 delegates present, a committee to recommend a ticket being appointed while the delegates listened to speeches in the interim. The committee eventually recommended former Senator George Troop of Georgia for president, and former Governor John Quitman of Mississippi for vice president. They were unanimously nominated. The two nominees accepted their nominations soon after the convention, which was held rather late in the season. Troop stated in a letter, dated September 27 and printed in the New York Times on October 16, that he had planned to vote for Pierce and had always wholeheartedly supported William R. D. King. He indicated in the letter that he preferred to decline the honor, as he was rather ill at the time and feared that he would die before the election. The party's executive committee edited the letter to excise those portions which indicated that Troop preferred to decline, a fact which was revealed after the election. Liberty Party nomination The Liberty Party had ceased to become a significant political force after most of its members joined the Free Soil Party in 1848. Nonetheless, some of those who rejected the fusion strategy held a Liberty Party National Convention in Buffalo, New York. There were few delegates present, so a ticket was recommended and a later convention called. The convention recommended Jarrett Smith of New York for president and Charles Durkee of Wisconsin for vice president. A second convention was held in Syracuse, New York, in early September 1852, but it too failed to draw enough delegates to select a nominee. Yet a third convention gathered in Syracuse later that month and nominated William Goodell of New York for president and S.M. Bell of Virginia for vice president. Topic. General election Topic. Fall campaign The Whigs' platform was almost indistinguishable from that of the Democrats, reducing the campaign to a contest between the personalities of the two candidates. The lack of clear-cut issues between the two parties helped drive voter turnout down to its lowest level since 1836. The decline was further exacerbated by Scott's anti-slavery reputation, which decimated the Southern Whig vote at the same time as the pro-slavery Whig platform undermined the Northern Whig vote. 
After the Compromise of 1850 was passed, many of the Southern Whig Party members broke with the party's key figure, Henry Clay. Finally, Scott's status as a war hero was somewhat offset by the fact that Pierce was himself a Mexican American War Brigadier General. The Democrats adopted the slogan, The Whigs We Poked in 44, Wheel Pierce in 52, playing on the names of Pierce and former President James K. Polk. Just nine days before the election, Webster died, causing many Union state parties to remove their slates of electors. The Union ticket appeared on the ballot in Georgia and Massachusetts, however. Results <inaudible> 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 When American voters went to the polls, Pierce won in a landslide, Scott won only the states of Kentucky, Tennessee, Massachusetts, and Vermont, while the free soil vote collapsed to less than half of what Martin Van Buren had earned in the previous election, with the party taking no states. The fact that Daniel Webster received a substantial share of the vote in Georgia and Massachusetts, even though he was dead, shows how disenchanted voters were with the two main candidates. As a result of the devastating defeat and the growing tensions within the party between pro-slavery Southerners and anti-slavery Northerners, the Whig Party quickly fell apart after the 1852 election and ceased to exist. Some Southern Whigs would join the Democratic Party, and many Northern Whigs would help to form the new Republican Party in 1854. Some Whigs in both sections would support the so-called Know Nothing Party in the 1856 presidential election. Similarly, the Free Soil Party rapidly fell away into obscurity after the election, and the remaining members mostly opted to join the former Northern Whigs in forming the Republican Party. The Southern Rights Party effectively collapsed following the election, attaining only 5% of the vote in Alabama, and a few hundred in its nominee's home state of Georgia. It would elect a number of congressmen in 1853, but they would shortly after rejoin the Democratic Party upon taking their seats in Congress. This was the last election in which the Democrats won Michigan until 1932, the last in which the Democrats won Iowa, Maine, New Hampshire, Ohio or Rhode Island until 1912, the last in which the Democrats won Wisconsin until 1892, the last in which the Democrats won Connecticut until 1876 and the last in which the Democrats won New York until 1868. It was, however, the last election in which the Democrats' chief opponent won Kentucky until 1896, and indeed the last until 1928 in which the Democrats' opponent obtained an absolute majority in the Bluegrass State. Source Popular Vote, Lape, David. 1852 Presidential Election Results. Dave Lape's Atlas of U.S. Presidential Elections. Retrieved July 27, 2005. Source Electoral Vote. Electoral College Box Scores 1789-1996. National Archives and Records Administration. Retrieved July 31, 2005. The leading candidates for vice president were both born in North Carolina and in fact both attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, albeit two decades apart. While there, they were members of opposing debate societies, the Dialectic and Philanthropic Societies. Both also served in North Carolina politics. King was a representative from North Carolina before he moved to Alabama, and Graham was a governor of North Carolina. Topic: <laughs> Geography of results. Topic: <laughs> 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 Cartographic gallery. Topic. Results by state Source, data from Walter Dean Burnham, Presidential Ballots, 1836–1892 Johns Hopkins University Press, 1955 pp 247–57 <laughs> Electoral College selection Topic. See also History of the United States 1849 Inauguration of Franklin Pierce Second Party System United States House of Representatives Elections, 1852 United States Senate Elections, 1852 Notes <laughs>